Hello, good people of YouTube. Lambo here. In this video, I'm going to teach you five tricks to help you navigate Giants Editor a little bit better and utilize some of their cool secret tricks you may not know about. So first, we're going to dive on into it. Before we get started, hit that like, subscribe. Stick around, guys. I got lots of stuff going on and lots of new videos coming out. All right, guys, my first little trick I call copy all, paste all numbers. It probably has a different name for it, but essentially what we're going to do is this sidewalk elemental pole that I have right here. It has this translation of X, Y, and Z, and I want to copy that. So I'm going to hit Control, Shift, and C, and it's actually going to copy each one of these lines. Now, I want to put this tree right where this pole is, but it, as you can see here, it has different translations. So we would click on the top one here, and then we would hit Control, Shift, and V, and it would paste in all those translations nodes to where it's right on top of where that pole is. And you can do the exact same thing with the rotation and the scale. You can also use this trick when you're needing to get the exact position of stuff or making animations. See, as you see in here, you have three sets of numbers, one, two, and three. And if we were to actually hit paste in here, you'll see that it would paste these numbers, one, two, and three. So you could highlight this, replace it. Um, this is a placeable XML. So if we were placing stuff on the map and wanted to spawn in, we could easily, instead of having to type in all those numbers of where the placeable is, you just copy it, paste it. You notice some of these have rotation in here and stuff. That's a quick, easy way to tell the game where you want your stuff to spawn. Next part is going to be a two part. We're going to talk about local and global and snapping. So if you go up here to this little house here, you can click or unclick this and one is local and one is world. What that means is the local is reading this object here, Cypress stage, this transform group, and it's using this data to dictate where it is on the map. Now, if we switch this over to uh, world, it's actually gonna move in a left and right Z axis up and down kind of a way. So left, right, movie stuff like that. Unlike with this one, local world would be able to go at angles and adjust stuff, which you could do that with this one. You know, you could do it like that, but it doesn't actually show it when you rotate it. It doesn't show the gizmo rotate, unlike when local is clicked that you can actually transverse on those individual lines. So one of the benefits of this is, let's say if you're going to put a whole bunch of trees like what I did right here, you could... So you got your first tree, you could control D it, and basically what that's gonna do is make a second one. Now, if I went back and I clicked on the top one and the second one with the, the world mode activated, I can actually move both of them. If the world mode isn't activated, I can only move one of them on that individual object's line. Now this makes it really great if you wanted to, let's say we wanted to have a line of trees right here and you're manually doing it, you could just hit Control D again to duplicate it and say we don't even want to make any more trees. So we just select those four and then we'll hit D to duplicate it again and boom. As you can see, I built a wall of trees relatively quickly using this method. And if we really want to get even more crazy with it, select them all again got our last two here and then we will click uh, set snapping for all modes so now it's actually you can see that it's kind of rigid it doesn't allow me to move it just a little bit it snaps to the next spot and if you, you do this if you're wanting to align things if you're looking for symmetrical in different ways and we can un uncheck that as well and it would move it just naturally it wouldn't have that snapping motion so there we go on that topic next on my little tips and tricks here we're going to talk about the glow shader because you may know about it but you may not know about it you still may be making lights in a very difficult way uh, and if you didn't know to make lights in fs22 most cases you have to have it in an outside program where you uv map it and vertex paint it 
and you and from there you can make it glow but there is another method here and it involves what's called the glow shader and you can learn about this by just finding a normal street lantern or light or whatever and you kind of break it down in here once you get past its visibility conditions here so it's only on at night that'd be uh, I think it's uh, one of these masks but essentially you see this bulb lit up here it's lit up because of this glow shader and if I adjust these numbers go back to my bulb here bulb lit if I adjust these numbers I can actually change that so maybe I just want it lit up a little bit or a lot and this is really neat because then you don't have to pull objects out into blender to make them glow anymore let's say for some odd reason I wanted this pole to glow I could select its main element not the collision sometimes when you start looking at this stuff you'll see collision and then the actual mesh what we call the visual part you can go to shader source add new it's gonna be really close to the top here glow shader now from what we were looking at just a second ago you can see that it's somewhat brighter uh, it's a little bit but if we let's say we added a zero to that that thing is now glowing granted the whole pole is glowing so you have to keep that in effect here but uh, let's say these were separate elements to where this part that lights up is a separate object from the pole you know this would be great but because I did that every I think every one of my poles are gonna be all lit up now <laughs> that is the glow shader is really and you can go pretty I think it's just up to 10 yes yeah, so you can go 5 to 10 there is other methods of this uh, we're not going to talk about now uh, like the slider and stuff like that if you look at the grocery store on the main map on the main vanilla stock map and how the grocery store arrow goes ring back and forth well that definitely is because of this glow shader next on the list we're going to be talking about collisions and how to make a child collision and what a child collision is is that's a collision that's attached to the main body so if we look on the left here where it says comp that is my main collision it's this big box you can see around it's the big one here it's invisible but you can see the outline of it that's the main collision then I have these little independent child collisions we'll go over to rigid body and you'll see right here where it's actually blocked out I can't unclick it uh, and I can't I can't create these from this mode either so it's kind of pain in the butt and stumps a lot of people because when I'm using this drone right now it's in testing um, I keep catching on the trees because there's no collision on this main leg right here so I'm gonna show you how to make some collisions in game here without ever having to throw it in blender to be able to click that button so very first thing I, I like to do to make it simple especially if the mods big is if there isn't a collision a child collision all the way down at the bottom you can double check compound child yep I want that one you can go all the way down to the bottom here and I got one there it just makes it easier to read when we open it up next we'll go over to primitives go to cube I'm gonna make this huge ugly cube but we're gonna make it small so you can use your translate rotation and scaling mode or you can just uncheck it and you can do all three at once so we're going to be making this pole it doesn't necessarily have to be a cylinder either you'll notice in the primitives you'll see cylinder that actually has more faces and you're not going to be looking at this so you want to use something with the least amount of faces and does it really matter if it's a square collision or a round collision right now uh, it's so tiny it really doesn't matter so th that's for up to you to decide you know in some cases you need a round collision but something like this you can save on performance all right, so we're just going to scale this bad boy all along here. That's about the length of that pole, right? We're going to go like this. We're going to get it all set up in the position <laughs> a little off. And using the scaling and snapping mode, I can actually just whoop that right into place and then move it back, kind of give it a little peek. You know and that's good enough so we don't drag on this tutorial here so on my right hand side over here the scale the scale Y scale Z these are all out of whack and that's not good to be a collision like that so we're gonna give it a little name here but 
when we name it, we right click on, we go freeze transformations. We're going to unclick translate. Make sure, unless you want to do that, don't do that. Um, and we'll click scale. And then from there, we're going to hit apply. And you'll notice that these right here will be all zeroed out. And that's going to be the shape of that object. If you don't do this, when the game loads up, it'll say, hey, that needs to be scaled at this. And that starts getting very confusing when it comes to collisions because they don't scale. They need to be at the size that you want them to. Otherwise, stuff gets a little weird. And I have some mods that do that. And once you get deep and you get them done, it's hard to go out and fix them. Okay, so now we got that scaled out. That is the object that it is. Let's duplicate it. But before we duplicate it, let's actually make it a child collision. And the best way to do that is if you're unsure, look at another collision. Let's look at the shape here. I got the top four clicked. It's non-renderable, distance blending, receive shadow, all these. So I'm just going to click back on my collision and I'm going to click the top four. If, if you're unsure, look at a mod that works <laughs> and do that. Okay, we still can't actually click the uh, where we want to make it a rigid body. You want to do the clip distance at like let's say 200 that's just how far you can see it when you're on the map but we'll click rigid body and now it's gonna say it's cooking mesh coal at, at this so that's okay once we hit save once it should go through and fix that little issue there so now we we have these choices of rigid body type but we still can't click that compound collision so let's look at the other one and see what it says so it's a static it's a collision and the compound child so let's just have those clicked. Well, it's the best we can do. All right, now let's hit save. Now, click up here where it says open i3D and text editor. If you don't have your text editor already set up right here, external tools, text editor, go find your notepad plus plus. It'll open up immediately and easily for you. So we're going to actually open this whole thing up in our text editor. And now we're just going to scroll to the bottom because that's where our collision is. We want to create a child collision. And you see right here in this code, here's my other collisions that I have, and they're properly done. It says compound child. We'll want to control C that. And then just paste it in here. After you've done that, hit save. Make sure to reload this. If you don't reload it, you have a open copy and you hit save all that that work we just did in the editor won't will go away yes i want to preload it okay so now we'll look at this collision it is now a compound child collision and you can go through and i think it's normally a 202 i think that's the but you can also leave it blank for right now it doesn't cause any errors that i know of probably wrong on that but who knows so now that we have that collision, we're going to put it inside of our mod inside of our scenograph here. So paste it in. Oh, we ran into a little a boo dicky. So we're going to have to replace it where we want to place it. Okay, that's good. Now I need one on the other side. So I'm just going to hit duplicate. And if you haven't understood how everything works, you got an X a Z and a Y axis. And so if I reverse this, let's say X on the opposite side, it's exactly where this one is on the other. I actually think this model is off just a hair. But if your model is symmetrical, which mine is not, it should put it right where it needs to be. And all you have to do is reverse the rotation, just put a negative there, and it basically is going to fit right where we want it. So then when we load it in game, I have a full set of leg collisions there that allow you the ability to be a compound child. And that is how I make compound child collisions. My next useful tip is a paint by spline script. And this actually comes stock in your Giants editor that maybe you didn't know about. You just go right up here where it says scripts. And I don't know everything on this, but also I will be doing a video in the future because there's a lot of cool stuff that I'm not going to cover in this, but we're going to hit it just basically. And that is painting the textures on the ground by a spline so you don't have to do it manually. And I've already went through and kind of made two custom ones for myself, but we're going to go through and show you exactly what those look like and how you can edit them 
by clicking on the window here and then we're going to scroll till we see script editor once we have script editor open your normal ones that you should have will be under terrain so you'll go to terrain and you'll see paint terrain by spline i cannot remember if you'll have this here i think i added that in uh, to know what i wanted to do but essentially if you read this up here it's uh, created by nicholas R i'm gonna murder your name bro i'm just not even gonna try the description is first parameter of the details the layer id and i don't know all the layer ids i have to go through and play with it the second parameter is half the width in meters so i was making these roads that i have in the map this is my road right here oh see i have more listed here i was playing with it i have concrete it just so happened to create me some really nice roads these roads are all made by spline and essentially i need a road that connects these two roads right here so it's not just this one road and so let's paint i'm going to go to create i'm going to go to spline now my spline is going to spawn over there so there's this cool trick called control b and now wherever you click that spline or whatever object you're going to have is going to pop up rotate it on yonder i want it to be pretty even so i'm going to hit the numbers here and then if you get real close you can zoom down and click the end and then click the start you could make some custom roads using insert and a handful of other stuff but i just want a straight road right now to show you how the script works because you could go through and design up some pretty complex road using splines just adding new sections of the spline but there we go i have it all the way to there and when i go up to my scripts because i'm using a different kind of asphalt uh, but it's the exact same code we're going to go paint spline by asphalt or if you were going to use the stock one uh, you would go right to there but i'm actually going to paint it and now you see that i got a perfectly straight line all the way down so this is super useful and saves you so much time because i'm not a ma map maker i know i make some maps but i it's not my favorite thing because painting all this grass and all that it's just pain in the butt but with this it's really helpful it, it can it can do a lot of different things and i'm sure there's plenty of other scripts out there too because uh, you can also raise the terrain and place objects by it uh, we'll do we'll do a whole different video on scripts but this is definitely one one task one tool to ask whatever you want to call it that you need to know because it saves you a lot of time if you're map making thanks for watching everybody if this video was interesting maybe this video will be interesting as well as i cover how to make your first mod